Hey, it's Lisa Lampanelli, and you're watching Comedy Matters TV. And Jeffrey Gurian, my lover. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching Comedy Matters TV. To check out some of our other videos, click on the boxes on either side of me. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Not just for me, but for my parents. Hey, it's Jeffrey Gurian here for Comedy Matters TV, and I'm down at the AOL build, building on Broadway in Manhattan, and I'm here with the incredible Lisa Lampanelli. Hi, how hey, are you? Hey, Jeffrey. We had so much fun. Oh, what an amazing time. I'm so honored. It was such a special thing to be able to do this AOL Build Talk with you. It's incredible. It must have been the best day of your life. It was. Not only did you get a chance to do something on AOL, you did it with me. Yes, your exactly. Your life is complete. My life is over now. It's ah. complete. It's completely fulfilled. Absolutely. No, but you know what was cool? We got to talk about some important stuff that a lot of people don't usually touch on mm -hmm. and about the other side of you because the truth is one of the reasons I was really excited to do it was because I love getting that information out. You are an inspirational person. Well, I try to be. To I change. try to be because they always say just live by example. I'm not a big, hey, I'm going to preach to people because who am I? I'm an insult comic. I'm just trying. I got my struggles. So I just try to, in my real life especially, just live by example and hope that mm -hmm. people can learn from my mistakes because there have been lots of them. And you know what? We just do our best and hope for the best that people can learn something. Preaching doesn't work. And that's why I'm glad that you said that too. Because it's not about preaching. It's about leading your life according, according to certain principles. And people are drawn to it. Mm -hmm. They say it's a program of example. Mm -hmm. You know, It's a program of attraction. Right. People want what you have. If you go trying to tell people to change, they don't want to listen. People back away. And I don't blame them. I would as well. But when you see people do stuff, and change their life and then become happy because of it, it inspires you to have the courage to do the same thing. Well, yeah, like even when I get tweets or something from people who say, oh, I'm going to get my weight loss surgery next week, uh, you help me get up the nerve to do it or to own it, um, I feel like really good. Or people say, you know, I learned to work on my anger or my self-hate or whatever because of something I said. I'm like, okay, well, even if two people in my whole life get uh, some sort of knowledge from what I've gone through, that's fine with me. Yeah, exactly. You never know who you affect. Mm -hmm. Like what we did today, there's probably millions of people who could see that. Mm -hmm. You never know who, who, who holds on to a certain word that you say. Mm -hmm. Something that seems so simple to you, you just say it off the cuff. Right. But right. yet, it's very meaningful to somebody else and they hold on to that. So you never really know who you change. Right. But what's interesting mm -hmm. is that, did it ever, like, did you ever worry that it would affect your comedy by making such radical changes in your life, like changing your, your persona, your physical being? You well, I didn't have time to worry about it because I had no choice. I like had no choice but to change. I wanted to get happier in my life. And I honestly had said at the time of the weight loss surgery, if I'm not funny anymore, that's okay, I'll retire. Like, I'm not that beholden to, you know, any kind of semi-fame or semi-fortune that I've gotten. It's just like, I want to live longer, so that's a clear thing that I should work on my health. And I also want to become a better person, and if that makes me not funny anymore, that's okay. I'll find the audience I need to. Yeah, exactly. And now you're turning down stuff. You don't even have to do any, everything anymore, right? Isn't that a yeah, cool place I used to be? To, well, yeah, I used Isn't to be, cool? you know, it's called scarcity. People grab everything. And everything isn't right for you. Everything that's offered to you isn't right for you. And now mm -hmm. it's going, does that come from a place of warmth? Does it make me feel better about myself or worse about myself? I mean, I've done so much radio, and there are a few radio guys who just, every time I call, I feel like crap about myself mm -hmm. after, whether it's their issue or mine, right. and I'm like, no, it's okay. Like, at this point, I don't want to do that. Or it's like turning your back on a quote-unquote friend that doesn't serve you anymore, meaning mm -hmm. you're both not growing from it. Hey, you know, we all know things fall away when we start to change, and that's okay. And it's interesting what you say about radio. There is some like mean-spirited radio, which is different than what you do, because you're you're an insult comic, but it's not. It doesn't come from meanness. Right. I mean, you know, and I love how everybody used to say, "Oh, Howard Stern's so mean." You've not met a nicer, more charitable guy in your life. You, know, Don Rickles, he mean comic. Really? <laughs> Have you ever met Rickles? He is like the biggest pussy on the planet. Yeah, right? yes, yes. Come yeah. on, he's a great guy. And the thing is, I think sometimes when people put it all out there on a stage. They're the exact opposite of what you would expect when they're off stage. Thank God. Thank God is right. It's a very rare thing to be able to to create that split, to be one person. Because 
there has to be some stuff that may be hard to say, mm -hmm. like because that's not really who you are. And I'm imagining that at some point you have to get yourself, you have to like bolster yourself in order to say, I can say this on stage because it's not know. really who I am. I don't not know. Really. I just always came easy to you. I just kind of always loved a good laugh. Yeah. You know, I just loved. I was a, definitely addicted to the laughter, but now it's more like I'm getting so. Um, much of my self-esteem from off stage and family and friends and just activities I love that I don't seem to get anything out of performing other than fun and giving to the audience. So I don't get my self-esteem from their laughter. I still have fun. I still earn it. I still put out 150% or 110 as Lou Ferrigno would say. Uh -huh. But I don't really look at it like, oh my God, if they went away tomorrow, I'd just die. What would I do for self-love? I'm starting to learn that you don't get it out there, it doesn't fill the hole right. out there. Outside validation doesn't work, right? They call that other esteem. Mm -hmm. Self esteem is from inside. And I said to Ron Bennington last week of Sirius, I said, Boy, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be great when I can just quit everything and just get all the self love from inside? I wonder if that's possible in life. And he's like, oh, Nobody knows. Okay. So it'd be great. Maybe Buddha did it. Right. I can aspire to Buddha. I'll get fat again. <laughs> And sit in the middle of the road, right? Hell yeah! yeah. I, no, but it's an interesting goal. It's a very interesting goal to work on that. I learned a long time ago. It doesn't matter how many people tell you you're fabulous, fantastic, gorgeous, whatever. It matters really what you feel about yourself. That's how I stopped stuttering. I had to work on my own self-esteem and build up my confidence to realize that I didn't have to burden myself with a disability that wasn't real. Mm, I created that for myself. Right, right. I held myself back because of that thing that I read about fear. Mm -hmm. My fear made me feel like I had to be less than to make other people feel good about themselves. What you're, you're belying that fact by being the biggest star that you can become and saying other people can follow you. They don't have to be threatened by you. It's an inspiration. Right. When you do well, it inspires other people to do well also. Well, one of the best days of my life was um, I ran into Amy Schumer about a year ago on a plane. Mm -hmm. And it was so cute because she had just done the Sheen roast. Mm -hmm. and, and killed she, it on the roast. Oh, yeah. loved, loved yeah, yeah. it. I was, I was oh, loving that. And she didn't hadn't hired a car and driver yet, and she w was taking a cab home, and I'm like, well, come in my car. And <laughs> like, she said to me, she goes, thanks for turning down the Charlie Sheen roaster. I would have never got it. And I and then got my TV show, and then she put me on, gave me a little guest spot on one of the episodes, oh, which was cool. awesome. Yeah. And I'm like, she paid it forward. And I'm like, I love when I see somebody doing the right thing and even have a tiny little hand and going oh she gave me a little credit and so i go wow me rejecting that roast protected me from having a bad time and protected her isn't so that a cool I, thing so that's the synchronicity yeah, that we were talking it's about so cool. that by stepping aside you allow somebody else not even knowing that you couldn't possibly no. have known it's not that like i said hey put her out. on i'm no hero believe me i mean yeah. if i was a real hero i would have said hey put this person on but what was cool was that it all works out the way it's supposed to. And again, that whole thing, compare and despair, there is no way you can compare yourself to somebody and feel good about yourself. You're, you'll either feel too good about yourself or not, <laughs> not good, good enough. enough. And the minute we all realize we're not less than anybody, we're who exactly we should be, then we'll all be fine. We'll stop looking at them as the enemy. Well, that's why that I'm hoping that our happiness show comes to fruition. Right. Because you were kind enough. Lisa came on this pilot that I did on mm -hmm. Sirius XM called The Happiness Show about things that you could do to bring happiness into your life. Right. Which you exemplify in everything mm -hmm. that you do. And so hopefully that's going to happen. And so we can help other people bring happiness into of their course, lives. Of course. Because right? what else is it really about? You know, people are like, what's my purpose? What should I be doing? It's not about what you're doing. It's about, I always say to people, Find, identify the feeling you want in your life. Like with me, it's peace. All I want to do is be peaceful and calm Comfortable. and go, I like myself, I'm fine. And mm -hmm. then you do the activities that get you a step closer and you turn down the things that don't. And it's really an easier way to look at, well, my life's happy and yet I don't have to be famous. I don't have to be rich. I could just be me and I'm okay. So yeah, I think that would really bring more, be, more people be happy if they just followed that feeling. Exactly. Now, tomorrow is your fifth special. Yes. Right? Epics is putting out Back to the Drawing Board. Comedy mm -hmm. Dynamics is producing it. The people that produce mm -hmm. the biggest one-hour specials in comedy. Yeah. Coming on tomorrow night, 
10 p.m., yep. right? Friday, 10 p.m., back to the drawing board. I'm going to live tweet during it so that people can tell me how great I look. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I can answer some of their questions and everything, so that should be fun. How long did it take you to come up with the title for that? Because it's, it's a very fitting title. Back yeah, to the you want to know what an accident that was? Yeah, yeah. You're going to yeah, talk about yeah. synchronicity. Yeah. Okay. I had a photo shoot about a year ago, and I had this really cute Yale sweatshirt because, you know, I went to an Ivy League school for six weeks. Yeah. So um, I did this photo shoot, and it looked like very sort of like being back in college. Mm -hmm. So when it came time to name the special, I saw that a lot of the material kind of corresponded to be sort of like, oh, going back in time, because I'm starting my life over as a single person after the divorce, as a person who lost weight, and I haven't mm -hmm. weighed this little since before high school. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wow, I kind of am back to the drawing board, and the picture fits. And anything that can save me a photo shoot, I'm happy, because I don't <laughs> want to get dressed up, I don't want to put on hair and makeup, I want to sit at home like a fat slob. So, guess what? Back to the drawing board, and it happened to fit. See, that's what the beauty of it is. It actually worked. It, it works amazingly well. I wish you so much luck. Oh, tomorrow. thank it's you. It's going to be amazing. You are phenomenal. Yay. Thank and, you so uh, much. And by the way, thank you for doing this AOL build thing for me. You were my only choice because I was like, Jeffrey gets it. You get wow. it in the bigger sense and you get me. So thank you. God bless you, man. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Yay. Really, really, really. So, so cool. So cool. Um.